I think that on the spiritual journey, one would never want to have the feeling of like coercion. Coercion, like there's something above it, above you, that was like, like, a, like having a magnifying glass and putting a, a beam, laser beam of light on an ant. Uh, you know, like Bruce Almighty says, it's like God is like a, a mean kid who's got a magnifying glass and he's just trying to burn my feelings off or something like that. No sense of coercion, um, a sense of lightness. Um, when I had students years ago, back in the 1990s, in the late 1980s and 1990s, sometimes I remember going to one of my students, and I went to her house and I was with her and everything, and a group of students were there and they watched me with her, and she had actually said to me, if you notice anything going on in my mind, please, in order to save time, point it out to me. If, if there's anything that I say or do, or anything that I'm missing, that, that you feel like would be helpful, I openly invite you to point it out to me. Her husband was, she was into the Course in Miracles by the way, her husband was a Jewish man who attended synagogue, and he kept an Orthodox Jew home, he had the, the, the foods of her kosher, and you know, it's the, the belief system of that. And his name was Steve, and he loved it when I would come over, and he would love, even when I was in the other room talking and giving sessions and everything, he would listen. And occasionally he'd come up to me and he'd go, it's, it's amazing to me to even begin to ponder that time is just a construct. You know, with the Judaism and the, and the tradition and all of, and the rituals and everything, he'd say, but I, I can kind of feel it. I feel kind of spontaneous sometimes, David, where I feel like this is good stuff. And, but, but he wasn't participating in the sessions on a regular basis or reading the course or anything. And, and he, you know, he was working through his guilts and fears and so on and so forth and, and trying to relate to his wife. It was uh, going through some pretty interesting things. I'm sure with you and Patricia it was a similar kind of thing. And then I would sit down with Mary and we would have these really pointed, deep, kind of discussions because of the invitation of hers. And then the students would watch me get up from that and I'd walk over and Steve would be like, Hey David, I got the basketball game on, come on in the other room. And they'd watch me go in and sit with him on the couch and watch a basketball game or part, parts of the basketball game. Always t slapping him on the back and laughing and joking with him and everything. And then later on we'd be in another context and they'd say, You're so hard on Mary. And you're awful light-hearted and loose with Steve, watching basketball games and everything. It's like, are you really treating them the same? Are you seeing the same Christ in them? And I said, oh yeah. I said, Mary gave me an invitation to point out the things in her mind that were blocking her from the light. And Steve has given no such invitation. He's not saying, free me of my, my Jewish religion and my heritage and my culture. Free me of my love of the Cincinnati Bearcats, our basketball team, and, and their march to try to be number one in the country. Free me, you know, he was not in the least, free me of my children and my self-concept with my wife. Let me see that I am the, the uh, Yahweh. <laughs> uh, I am Yahweh, one with God, and this and this and this. He was barely, and I mean barely, barely, making his first turn from traditional religion into a more expanded view of what could possibly maybe be beyond that. Was he going to stop going to the synagogue? No. Was he going to stop watching his basketball games? No. Was he going to stop worrying about his children? No. <laughs> Was he going to be concerned about how much, how much sex he had with his wife? Yes. <laughs> He talks with me frequently <laughs> about that. She's losing her sex drive with this Course in Miracles. <laughs> this is not a good thing. Our, our frequency is going down. <laughs> and this is not a good thing, you know. It's like, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> and can we talk? We're buds. Can we yeah. talk? You know, this, you know, it's still going to be 
a very loving relationship and the context of the relationship is going to be a little different than it was with Mary, whose pathway was A Course in Miracles, who is, was, we could say, opening to the holy instant, you know, to the disappearance of the universe, to the capacity that she, she could, and so forth. So, so it starts to, that's kind of a little example about how you really do have to let go of the form of things. Because I think you'll, you will find you will go crazy if you try to actually love everybody equally based on your own past learning and your own reference points. Mm -hmm. The Spirit's going to have to take you there. There's no way that the human being is going to go, I now am the Christ, I love everyone equally, and all the creatures and critters and, and everything mm -hmm. in the world. That big, great white shark, <laughs> that ant, that mosquito, that, oh, that blood that's coming off my forehead. <laughs> oh, I love you, love you, love you. <laughs> Thank you for that bite. <laughs> you know, it's not, you can see from a human perspective, it's, it's going to be hard to level the playing field, but, but with God all things are possible. Coming into purpose, coming deeper into purpose, in alignment with God, progressively, you know, step by step, it happens. It's, it's happening. It's, it's, our, it's our natural direction to be in a state of natural love with, with everything and everyone. It's practical too.